let's get it started. Hi guys, Movie Tastic here. Sorry. Hello, after a long, long absence. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and a great and a great Thanksgiving weekend. I'm here again to, sh to do a, a movie that I have been waiting for, like, since the summer. Like, this movie caught my interest greatly, and since then, I've been obsessed with it for weeks. I am, today, I am reviewing Rise of the Guardians. Rise of the Guardians is a very different movie where, like, it takes all these folklore characters like Santa Claus, Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, and the Sandman, and Jack Frost, who is the Spirit of Winter, into a movie that is so perfectly done, so well executed, really good voice acting, beautiful effects, and characters you really care about. As we see here on the list here, this middle section is for movies. Let's into the pros and cons, I'll tell a little bit of backstory. Actually, The Rise of the Guardians is actually based off of a book series called Guardians of Childhood, written by William Joyce. I haven't personally read them, so I don't know how close they are to the books, but it kind of tells like a really unique backstory on these characters. It only tells like the main four, like Santa Claus, like what I said earlier, but it's a really, really good film. Now, the story of Rise of the Guardians, and I will try my best not to spoil much because it's going to be really hard because it's really hard to resist, is that Jack Frost, the spirit of winter, has done his gig about 300 years, and he is kind of sad because no one believes him. Like, the, see, the thing is, is that in this world, if a certain thing, like, say, Santa Claus, Tooth Fairy, Easter Bunny, whatever, if children don't believe with them, they're invisible. Like, they walk right through them. Like, they're completely invisible. The kids can't see them. Other guard, like, other spirits, like, like, other beings, like, the Tooth Fairy, Sandman, the others can, but the children can't see them. They're kind of like the kid version of the Avengers. Their main job is to protect the beliefs and imagination of children all the world from the Boogeyman. And it's up to Jack to realize on his position as a guardian, finding his memories that he c cannot remember when awakened as Jack Frost, and hopefully meet his destiny. What I liked about this movie, there is a lot of uh, what I liked in this movie, and I'll try my best to keep it to a minimum. The animation. DreamWorks, each and every year, improve on their movies greatly. The animation is beautiful creating these worlds like the tooth like the tooth fairy's palace is stunning. The warm which is the Easter Bunny's place totally magnificent. And even the book even the Boogie Man's lair looks interesting. And and most my most favorite and the one we see most often in the beginning is Santa Claus's workshop which is worked by Yetis, not by Elves. <laughs> and it's really good animation. The characters, these characters are so likable. You really feel for them, particularly Jack Frost, who is the main who is the main focus of the movie. Like I said, he's done his gig for like about 300 years. He's sick and tired of not being believed in, and so when Santa Claus actually brings up that he's the guardian by the man in the moon. The man in the moon is actually the person who chooses him. He doesn't really talk, he's just like the moon and whatnot. Maybe like a telepathic link, I have no idea. So, Jack is offered a position as the guardian, but he refuses because of his bitterness of children not believing him. He's really laid back, really aloof, and much like any teenager. And I have to say, his backstory is one of the saddest things you'll hear in this movie. I was like, my heart strings were being tugged a lot during that, and there are a lot of scenes I like. Character's really good. Tooth is hilarious. I love her. She's bubbly. She's bright. She's motherly. I never would expect she would be half hummingbird, but I love it. And... 
The Easter Bunny is completely awesome in this movie. I mean, with the dual boomerangs and whatnot, like, he really cares. It's so amazing. Sandman, another great character. Like, how they animated his sand was fantastic. North, he's just a riot. And the Boogeyman, or Pitch as he's called by his name. I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw him, he scared the heck out of me. I'm like, I'm 18 years old. That's the age out of the demographic for this movie. If you can scare an 18 year old in a kid's movie, you did your job pretty well. Um, let's see. Characters. What else is good? Voice acting is really good. I mean, Chris Pine, okay, Chris Pine wouldn't be the first choice I picked for Jack Frost, but he does the character really well. Like, he really puts in through the emotions and the feelings that he's gone through, like, 300 years! Done his thing for 300 years and no one even believes in him. Now, think about it, if you were in his position, I would feel bitter also, and I just love how aloof and laid back he is, but he's also very caring towards the little kids. I won't spoil what his backstory is, but there's actually a reason for why he is. Ella Fisher, I think that's how you say her name, I really don't know. She is, oh my gosh, I love her as the Tooth Fairy. I mean, she's energetic, she's bubbly, she's motherly, and she really genuinely cares. And is it just me, or does she have a, a crush on Jack Frost? Because it really shows in the movie. <laughs> and I, the look of her is brilliant. Like, this mixture between, like, a princess and a hummingbird. And, like I said, her palace, amazing! Then we have Hugh Jackman tells the voice of the Easter Bunny. <laughs> what can I say? Completely. Two words. Completely awesome. <laughs> Sandman doesn't talk, but he kind of talks like with pictures on top of his head. And that actually brings up a favorite moment I had in the movie, where Sandman, because he can't talk, is trying to get the other Guardians' attentions. They're all arguing. He's trying to point up to the moon like the moon knows something. He's sick of it. He grabs one of Santa's elves, picks it up by the hat, there's like a bell on the attached to the end, and shakes it around like this, very violently. And after that, he just drops the elf right back down and points up to the moon, I thought. <laughs> that scene is just hilarious, and... Really, really, really funny. Then we go up to North. He's voiced by Alec Baldwin. I'm not gonna lie, even after hearing the, um, trailers and seeing the movie, I'm like, I still can't believe that's Alec Baldwin because he does a really, really good job. Like, he is, he's very stubborn, very hot-headed, but he really genuinely cares. Another thing I also forgot to mention is that each of the Guardians represents not only an aspect of a holiday, but represent an aspect of childhood, like North is the Guardian of Wonder, the Easter Bunny is the Guardian of Hope, like Hope with Easter, Tooth is the Guardian of Memories, and Sam is the Guardian of Dreams. Like Their, their job is to literally like, protect the children in the world. The last of the voice acting, Jude Law as the Boogeyman. I'm speechless. I mean, it's really good. Like, it's chilling enough to give shivers down your spine. Reminds us all teenagers why we were afraid of the boogeyman in the first place. Huh. Mere thought of his voice just sends shivers down my spine. <laughs> what I didn't like about this movie, actually there's a lot of things I did like, but there are also things I disliked and it's really hard of picking a few. Number one, I have to agree with this with Doug Walker. Him and his brother actually did a review of this. Oh, yeah. I'm not against Rob saying, oh, Chris Law, like Chris Pine and Jude Law were bad voices. I thought it was decent. Was the pacing. The pacing of this movie was a little weird. I mean, they jump to places very, very, very quickly. Like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. One example is... When the Tooth Fairy loses her powers, I will not explain how, because I will try not my best not to ruin the story. They do on this thing like this, like literally a contest on who will collect the most teeth. And that's actually when the fast pacing works. 
but we're never in one place. We're just constantly moving. Like there are barely any slow movements, slow moments in this mo movie, and sometimes that's a good thing. But come on, we just want to admire stuff. And what else? As much as I love Jude Law as the Boogeyman, he's really not that impressive as a villain. I mean. Okay, his motive is pretty clear, like, he's sick and tired of not being believed in, so he's basically like, oh, I my life was miserable, I'm gonna make your life miserable, and, uh, there's no great entrance, I mean, he has presence, but there's no great entrance of him, I mean, the first scene of him, literally, is that he's in a bedroom of a kid dreaming about something, he touches the, the dream, which is made out of Sandman's sand, it turns into a nightmare, I mean... All he does is basically try to make either make deals with Jack Frost or just be intimidating and I have to admit the way how they did with how they did with him was very, very, very clever. And the kids as much as I Jamie, the main kid who does not stop believing in the Guardians, is a really, really great character. Like that scene with him where Jack Frost gets seen for the first time. I was so happy. The other kids besides Jamie's sister, I don't know why, they personally didn't get my interest. I thought, oh, come on. Don't believe, don't give up hope. Just believe the Guardians will be there. I mean, okay, the scene where the kids stepped up, stepped up to um, the Boogeyman was actually very good. But uh, other than that, they personally didn't go with me. And, uh... What else in this movie? Uh, let's see. The way how this movie ended, you know there's going to be a sequel. I mean, they have to. I mean, with a movie this critically acclaimed, like the critics love this movie, there has to be a sequel. I mean, there is no way they can make a movie this grand and have an ending like that. For those of you who've seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They're gonna make a sequel. You just know it. Like, there are a lot of times where I laughed, where I cried, like, a, a certain character gets quote-unquote defeated. I cried my eyes out. This movie, the rating I give for Rise of the Guardians is a 9 out of 10. A really good movie. It does have its problems. An epic movie for all. Basically, an event, basically it's the Avengers for kids, basically. Rise of the Guardians, before, be barely honest, I had no, I heard of Jack Frost, but I had no idea who he was, but after this movie, I believe, I may be a teenager, I may be 18 years old, but after this, seeing this movie, my faith in these guys is completely restored, I mean, things are possible if you just believe, and... It's a really good movie. I should warn you for kids under the age of uh, 10. The Boogeyman is very, very frightening. So I, if you, so if your child is not fine with that, walk them out of the theater. Just a little tip. And dude, the Christmas season, I, I, I seriously bet Santa Claus is working really hard. See you guys, movie tistic. This is Movie Tistics. This is my end of my review. As you can see, I have a new background. This will be the official background for my videos. And and to quote Jack from the movie, any I can't to quote something. Anything is possible if you believe, and this movie will definitely make you believe. It's a great movie, a great family movie for both kids and adults, and even kids my age. The animation's great, the characters are wonderful, the voice acting is phenomenal, DreamWorks, you've really outdone yourself, and put comments on the bottom, again, don't go too crazy, voice your opinion, and till then, we'll see, we'll see where DreamWorks goes with this. But again, see you next time. I hopefully be here for an anime review, I haven't done that, like, I think, like, a few years ago. I'll see you guys around. Oh, this is Movie Tistic. This is Movie Tistic. Signing off. Bye.